Hello, and welcome to another episode of Utopia Restorations. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Will, and today we're in something completely different. We're in my ultimate dream car, which I have finally purchased. Here we are, you can hear the rumble. It is a V8 manual five litre Mustang from 2016. And it's in guard green, which is a really cool paint, which I'll show you more of in a second. In the interior, this isn't really gonna be much of a review. It's just gonna be introducing you to it, showing you a bit of a drive and showing you a bit of what it can do. And some of the plans we've got for the future. So I'm gonna get out, I'm gonna give it a drive. You hear it pull off. And we're just gonna go out and enjoy it. I actually do need to go somewhere, so. We are not going to head to the most exciting roads I've ever known, but there is definitely plans to go to some of the most exciting roads that I do know and go to a lot of cool places. It is, it's not modified, but it does have a Scorpion exhaust on it. It's resonated, which is something I definitely wanted as I didn't want an exhaust that was too obnoxious. But yeah, it's just a beautiful car and I love it. So let's get out and go for a bit of a drive. that you can hear, you may be mistaken in thinking that it's supercharged. It's not, that's actually a common feature of these. It is a S55, um, well, S550, there you go. So getting into my Mustang lingo. Um, and yeah, the gearbox just sounds like that, which some people think is a negative, but I think it's pretty cool. It just sort of sounds like it's supercharged when it's not. You can hear the 30 V8, which I absolutely love, which is true sounds of America. And yeah, I think the exhaust is perfect for me. It's just right. It's not too loud. It's not too quiet, but it's just sort of that balance. I didn't want it to be hellish and a bit, a bit loud, although I've done with some of my previous cars. And it's got enough power. And at the end of the day, although this is a muscle car or a pony car, it does actually have very good GT qualities about it. So I have been already cruising about, We've taken it to the Cotswolds, horrific is beeping, it's nothing to do with me. Um, I have already taken it to the Cotswolds, yeah. And on the motorway, you've got 40 mpg, so you cannot complain about that, can you? Admittedly, if you do enjoy yourself, you're not going to be in the 40s, but it's not been bad. And actually, the fuel tank isn't too big. So I mean, a full tank has been about like 60, 70 quid. So it's not massive compared to the size of the car. For example, compared to the L322, when I was filling that up, that was like 150 quid of diesel, so it's like 100 litre tank. Whereas this is sort of on the 50 or 60 litres. You could look it up somewhere, but in all honesty, I don't really care how many litres this fills up with because it's got V8. And it sounds pretty good. So yeah, been living life with windows down, enjoying it. But you know, if you need it, it's got heated cool seats. And you can just cruise back. And I just have to say, I'm enjoying the stopping power I think they're four pop Brembo's on the front. Um, and I've got slotted discs. When you put your foot down to get it to stop, it can stop. Just enjoying some of the uh, local traffic here. <laughs> it does sound good. And it does make me smile a lot, which pretty much for the last few weeks, my cheeks have just been hurting, which is a good thing. I will, in a second, take you to some better roads where you can hear some little noises. But in a minute, I will just give you a quick walk around of the outside. Around the outside and show you some of the features and some of the cool things that I like about my, well, new to me, five litre manual Mustang. It's got to be the colour, as you know from my other cars. Admittedly, this is no longer mine, but They've all got to be green, and it's pretty hard to find this green. 
when you get a torch on it, it is pearlescent and can sort of look a bit gray in some lights, but can also be green. So yeah, really happy with it. It's called Guards Green. And there's not a lot of these because after them, they did the bullet version, which was the full bullet green. So there's not too many of these about, not many V8 and manual ones. If I wanted an auto, I had my pick of the choice, but I wanted a manual. And this was the only one in the UK and was on budget with a good dealer and really enjoyed it. And you see black wheels. I'm not usually a fan of black wheels. I don't mind them on this, it sort of works. I haven't fully cleaned these, so interested to see what all the spokes like. But you can see the Brembo's there. I said four pot earlier, there may be six pot, but I'm not sure. But pretty P0 is one of the things I loved. It's been well maintained and well looked after. It's no spring chicken, it's got a few miles on it, but it has all been sort of motorway miles. And to me, it's sort of a bit more of a daily spec, this one. Uh, other things, it's got tinted green glass, which I do quite like. And on the rear, you can see the resonated Scorpion exhaust. Other than that, it's completely stock. Weirdly, it has been dynoed, but when it was dynoed, it was again, came back as stock. So not too bad about that. Some bits that we do want to improve though, it does have a bit of road rash on the front, just from its life and how it's been lived. You sort of see it there. So I'm gonna look to improve that, but equally, I don't really mind too much because I just wanna get out and use it. So the plan with it is just to drive everywhere. You may have seen in my last video that we've had some changes and some things have gone like the TT5. But this is just going to be our grand tour. I want to take to Scotland, I want to take to Germany, Monaco, I want to drive all around the UK, Wales, all sorts of places like that. Just get out and enjoy it and cruise around and get used to it. I also do want to take on some track days and make sure I'm enjoying it out and about and seeing what it's like on the road and places like that. I can very easily see how you could get yourself into a bit of trouble in one of these. It's a very fun and it is quite quick. Don't get me wrong, I'm not the fastest car on the road and I'm not going to do anything silly with it. I put a supercharger on it for the moment. If I watch this video back in four years time and it's got a supercharger, don't shoot me. But it is quite good stock and I'm going to enjoy it. There may be some more modifications, like there may be some RTR parts, there may be some intakes. Generally, I just want to get out and enjoy it. I have already had an oil change on it by Ford because that did ping up. So I said I'd get it done with Ford, so I did. But yeah, just been out enjoying it. But I think that's enough of showing you around this pretty, pretty car, which I can now share all the pictures and everything I've done with it. And I think it's time to get in it and enjoy it and take it for a drive. So let's go for a little bit of a drive and chat about it. So watched a lot of reviews and a lot of things like that. And I may do a buying guide for you guys at some point. because a lot of people seem to enjoy those on a sort of, what is it? 15 plate, 16 plate Mustang. But one of these has been my dream since they were released when I was 14. I always wanted to own one. I didn't think I necessarily would as they were 40,000 pounds brand new. The facelift ones of these, not as much a fan of those. I definitely wanted like the first gen of the modern Mustangs, but I didn't think they would because they were holding value very well. They sort of were listed at 40,000. You know, maybe add a few extras and get them to 42. And then they sort of seem to be used, fly, used. They sort of seem to still be about 36, 38, which isn't bad, but isn't particularly fantastic. Uh, not a lot of depreciation. However, this one did come up and did come into the right price packet, ownership, everything like that. One of the things I was looking at and coming and hiring, it's mileage on them. A lot of them do have lower miles, they are weekend toys. So you do get a lot of them sort of with, I don't know, around sort of 30 to 40,000 miles, which is better than this. This has got 90,000 miles, so a bit higher, but average year on year isn't too bad. It was used as a daily and clearly as a commuter. But those sort of ones that have got the lower miles of 30,000 or 40,000, if they've been redlined every weekend, if they've been redlined every weekend, then you know, is that a better car to be buying than one that's just been motorway driven? I know this car lives near me, sort of it was Guildford way, it was Aldershot way, and it'd been serviced by Ford throughout its entire life. And the owner used to drive sort of towards Hadrian's Wall, clearly for work, as I was regularly used, which is a 500 mile round trip. So it does have some imperfections, you can see in the camera here, on the bit of the steering wheel, there's some leather. It's nothing too major, nothing that upsets me. So the interiors on these are really hard wearing. And yeah, onto the interior then, let's go for that. A lot of people do say that the build quality isn't quite there for these. There's a lot of sort of plastic or some bits that don't fit, but it doesn't really mind. Like I had a Ford previously, and a lot of people really say you don't really get them for the interior. One of the things I did think I would be changing is the big silver dash. I didn't think that would be something I'd enjoy. I thought about wrapping it and doing all sorts of different things with that. Then actually, when you get in the car and you get to know them, the silver dash works with bits of chrome, it works with the extra parts, and actually looks fine. It's one of those things that a picture can look very, very different to real life. 
So yeah, interior wise, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it's all good. I may get an RTR again on for it. I may see if I'm doing some leather restoration. I've already done a deep clean with an ozone machine and also done a vax on it. Um, yeah, so I did all the reviews, did everything like that. There's not a lot of things some people do say about there can be things with cold starts on them, but when you actually read into it on the cold starts with the ticking, not a lot of people have ever had issues from it. So no one's ever had anything break or go significantly wrong. It's just sort of one of the things to be wary. And this didn't have that. So it was very happy. Very nice chaps that we brought from H Specialist Cars over in Watford. Some really cool stocks. They had like a STO and things like that, and one of those rally Lamborghinis, whatever you call those. Um yeah, just some really interesting things. But I do have to say, it has surprised me as a daily. It is something that is actually pretty usable. And pretty fun. And it always moves as far as my face. But I've sort of been waffling on and chatting about it. I'm going to show up and we're going to get to a fun road. And I'm going to give you some noises. Because let's face it, that's what you really want. There you go, I have managed to buy my dream car, which is something I really didn't expect would happen for quite some time. And it's a socking great big Mustang V8. So I will still have the 67 and I will still have the 109. So I'm still keeping a Land Rover and I will have another Mustang as well. And I will do some updates on that one. There's more content coming on that on the channel. So just make sure you stay tuned for the 67. As always, if you are enjoying the content, please make sure you drop a like and subscribe massively helps us out and it means we can do more fun things. We've got many, many road trips planned in this, and many, many fun adventures. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Yeah, we'll do some more cool content with it, maybe do a review and some other bits. And in the meantime, I'm just going to enjoy the sound of my V8. See you in a bit.